Ladies and gentlemen, we're always honored to have with us, and it's certainly a particular honor this morning with us to have with us our Commissioner of Agriculture, Steve Troxler. Uh, you know Steve Troxler. He uh, is kicking off uh, in January. He'll be kicking off his fourth term in office as Commissioner of Agriculture. We at North Carolina Farm Bureau sincerely appreciate the close working relationship that we have with the Commissioner and his staff. We especially look forward to working with him and his staff on organizing another successful Ag Day on March the 15th. Put that date down. We're going to have another Ag Day, and certainly under the Commissioner's leadership, we're rallying all of Ag in North Carolina uh, to move that forward. He has built, Steve Troxler, as you know, is a hardworking Commissioner of Agriculture. I see it on a daily basis. He has built one of the strongest departments of agriculture in the country. Commissioner, we're glad to have you here with us this morning, and we thank you for your service to the people of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming our Commissioner of Agriculture, Commissioner Steve Troxer. Commissioner. Good morning. To those of you that are not from Guilford County, I welcome you to my home county and hope you spend a lot of money here. Uh, we absolutely do need it. Uh, today is the day for me to just say thank you. Uh, thank you for your support in this last election. Uh, it was a pretty amazing election. I think a topsy-turvy election, as everybody knows, but in the end, a dirt farmer from Brown Summit led the ballot. Uh, that is so humbling and so special. And it was because of support of people like you all across North Carolina. Now, I didn't, I didn't do too well in some of the large cities in North Carolina, but in rural North Carolina, uh, the support was almost unbelievable with the number of votes that we drew in rural counties. And that's what I'm about. Uh, that's what I've been about since day one. Uh, and I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, there's a lot ahead of us to do. I uh, think you uh, have heard me say that I want this to be a uh, $100 billion industry by the year 2020. Uh, some people think maybe that's been pushed back by the recent year that we've had. I don't think so. I think we're going to bounce back and we're going <laughs> to do what we need to do to continue to be successful. But we're bruised and battered from the mountains to the coast. There's no question about that. And uh, when I saw uh, Hurricane Matthew's effects from the air, I mean, it was just, uh, it was unbelievable that something like that could happen, but it did. Uh, and especially unbelievable when they said Hurricane Floyd was a 500 year flood. I must be older than I thought. I've now seen two of them uh, in my lifetime. Uh, so, you know, you wouldn't expect things like that to happen, but it did, and now we've got to recover. and. That's, uh, you know, that's part of, of what we do in the department. In fact, I've got a lot of my staff members that wanted me to tell you that they are sorry they're not here, but I've got them locked down this morning uh, doing uh, facts and figures. We, by Friday, we've got to go to the legislature with a proposed disaster relief package, and uh, so we're going to be ready to do that and be ready to help people in rural North Carolina to cut, recover, and it, uh, it's going to be quite a task to put something together that's sellable to the legislature, but we're going to do our, our very best. You know, even with the, the, the Hurricane Matthew, and you think you've seen it all, then the wildfires in western North Carolina, uh, that, that was something we never experienced before. To put it in perspective, in a, in a normal year, if we have one what we call program fire, a fire that is so big that we have to call in extra help to help with that fire, that's a big deal. We had 25 of them going at one time in, in the North Carolina mountains. And uh, I can tell you, after what we went through, as bad as it was, it made me proud to be a North Carolinian and proud to be an American. Uh, when I went to the Lake Lure fire uh, right after it started, there were fire departments from all across North Carolina, rural fire departments, uh, municipal fire departments. There were over 500 fire engines in, up there at Chimney Rock protecting those houses. We had 27 states from across the country come in to help us with these fires. We had the National Forest Service working with us. So, uh, you know, at one time we had upwards of 3,000 people and an you know, unbelievable amount of equipment fighting these fires, and it's scary. 
Uh, our worst nightmare was that one of the valley towns that we have in Western North Carolina would something like that would happen, what happened in Gatlinburg. Uh, and what happened in Gatlinburg, I don't think there was any amount of planning, any amount of anything that was going to stop that fire. It's just an you know, unfortunate disaster. But that was our fear. And by the grace of God, we were able to come out of that without losing a house, without losing a business, with all that fire that was going on. And I, I can't say enough good things about the State Forest Service and the work that they did. Uh, these people were putting in uh, 21 days in a row, 12 to 16 hours a day. There's no relief, nowhere to get away from it, breathing smoke every day. So they truly are heroes, and yet we owe them a great uh, debt of gratitude for what they did. But I would have expected nothing, you know, nothing any different. Uh, the department is full of people that serve like that every day. And, and my victory in this last election, I took as a referendum on the things that they do uh, every day. So I'm very proud of them for everything they do. We did have good things happen this year, though. Uh, the Food Manufacturing Task Force that we work with Farm Bureau on, uh, we came out with recommendations. And for the first time, we have a recruiter on the road that is actively trying to bring food manufacturing to North Carolina. If we're going to grow it, let's get all of the dollar, all of that retail dollar from the, the field all the way to the uh, all the way to the retail store. Dean Lenton uh, at NC State led that effort, and I think it was uh, very worthwhile, and I think it's going to pay big dividends toward us getting to that $100 billion uh, goal that I have. Uh, we also this year uh, were successful uh, in the department in a lot of different areas, and you had a big play in the Connect uh, North Carolina bond. Through that bond, we are in the process of planning a uh, $94 million lab facility that was absolutely needed in the department. Uh, our labs are antiques. Uh, we have problems heating and cooling them. Uh, there's something always broke down, so we can't wait to get this new lab building built. Uh, it's going to be some work involved in it. This would be the first lab of its type in the country that combines all the lab functions that we do. There's vet, pesticide, food and drug standards, and motor fuels into one facility. But it's going to make us really efficient in delivering the services that we need to deliver to North Carolina, and we're well into that. We've hired HH Architecture out of uh, Raleigh that we've worked with in the past, and we're well into seeing a a uh, proposed design into that, and by this spring we hope to really get into design and, and before long let the contract on building that building, and we think that that will be a uh, probably a four-year process to get this building uh, built. Uh, Dean Lenton's uh, Plant Science Initiative, also in that bond, and uh, he has done such a wonderful job not only getting the Plant Science Initiative into the bond, but raising the rest of the money to build that out. And Dean, I think that's a, what, a five-year project. 2021 is uh, the expected date that that will be done. This will be the future of North Carolina agriculture, plant sciences. As big as we are in animal agriculture in this state, uh, these animals eat plants. So the more efficient we are at producing the feed supply for these livestock, the more competitive we are worldwide and the, the better we're going to be at feeding a hungry world. Larry mentioned uh, the Ag Day that will be March the 15th. Our first Ag Day was a huge, huge success, thanks to you folks and the other commodity groups and farm groups. But I will never rest easy until every farmer in this state drops what they're doing on that day and comes to Raleigh. It's that important. The legislature makes all these decisions that we need that made in the right way, and they need to understand that, you know, that the rural North Carolina people are the people that need these things done in the right way. So I hope this year that everybody will just drop what you're doing, put it on your calendar right now, and come to Raleigh for Ag Day. It's a lot of fun, believe me. Uh, and you get to get your two cents worth in with the legislature and, and let them need what you're going to need for the future. So uh, once again, share this with uh, your friends and neighbors, and please do come to Raleigh. 
December 13th is the day that uh, the legislature is going to come back to discuss uh, disaster relief, and we're going to do our best to be prepared for that. And Larry, uh, as we work through this, I know you're going to be busy the first part of the week, but we would like Farm Bureau's input on what uh, a disaster relief program should look like. We've got the figures from FSA on uh, crop damage. Uh, we've got to come up with figures on uninsured uh, uh, damage to infrastructure and that kind of thing, but we're going to go forward with a program to get agriculture back on its feet uh, and resilient again. And one thing that I've got to do is I've got to recover the $20 million that we spent in the mountains fighting wildfires. And I've asked the question of some people, what do you do with an elected official that spent $20 million that he didn't have? That's me. But we had to put these fires out, and I think the legislature understands that, and, and it won't be any problem. But uh, if you will, let your legislators know uh, how important a disaster relief package is for eastern North Carolina and the job that was done putting these wildfires out in the mountains. Many of them I took up to see the wildfires, and they understand it, but I will rest easy uh, when that $20 million is appropriated out of the rainy day fund to take care of this. I thank you so much for everything you do every day. I look for, forward to the next four years serving as your Commissioner of Agriculture and continuing to move this state forward. Uh, we can't set on our laurels in agriculture. We've got to keep pushing forward and be successful. And with the help of uh, Farm Bureau, then uh, we're going to do that. The, the thing that I'm proudest of right now as the Commissioner of Agriculture is the, the farm groups, the commodity groups, all the people involved in agriculture are pulling in one direction. Uh, when we do that, then we're going to be successful and we're going to continue to build relationships not only here in North Carolina but nationally that, that help us to do that. Our relationship with uh, NC State University has never been better. With A&T State University, it's never been better. So we're, we're in the right place right now. And Dean Linton, I thank you for your vision. Uh, and your drive to, to take North Carolina forward. Dean Linton had to go through his uh, program review, and uh, I guess it was last week, and that's kind of like standing for an election, and several of us went to that, and I thought I was going to get to vote, but we didn't get to vote on whether he's going to stay or leave, but I think if he were, if they don't let him stay, I think there's going to be an uprising, so I feel really comfortable that he won this election. Thank all of you once again, and I shall go to Raleigh and work on trying to get a disaster relief package through the legislature. Thank you.